With the selection brush tool, circle around the person in the back, and Photoshop will automatically fill in the selection. Then from the taskbar, click on Generative Fill, leave the prompt blank, and click Generate. Photoshop will then give you three incredible generations, and all you have to do now is choose the one that works best. I'm Jesus Ramirez from the Photoshop Training Channel. In this video, I'll show you how to remove distracting objects from your photos in Photoshop. Let's now remove the distracting black pole in front of our body. This time, we'll use a keyboard shortcut to enable the Selection Brush tool. Press Shift-L multiple times to cycle through the nested tools under the Lasso tool, and stop when you see this icon. Now circle around the pole. Go into Generator Fill, leave the prompt blank, and Generate. Photoshop uses artificial intelligence to make a good guess about what's behind the pole. It matches the color, shadows, perspective, and everything else. While this is the easiest workflow to remove objects from a photo, it isn't always the best. Let's now look at the Remove tool and why it's sometimes a better option. Start by enabling the Remove tool, which is nested under the Spot Healing Brush tool. Then create a new layer to work non-destructively. You don't want to destroy the original image. Then hover over the distraction and use the bracket keys in the keyboard to make the brush a bit larger than the area you want to remove. The bracket keys are to the right of the letter P in North American keyboards. Now all you need to do is click and drag down. And Photoshop will automatically remove that distraction. It removes it automatically because we have this option checked. Remove after each stroke. And if you uncheck that, we can continue painting over multiple distractions, and this will make the process a bit faster because you don't have to wait for Photoshop to finish doing the removal before you move on to the next object. All you need to do now is simply tap on the Enter key on the keyboard, and those distracting objects will disappear. Another fantastic feature with this tool is the Find Distractions dropdown. From here, you have access to a one-click removal of wires and cables. Photoshop will automatically find cables, wires, power lines, and automatically remove them. And the results are incredible. Before and after, we managed to remove all those power lines with just one click. You might have also noticed this option here under Editable, People. When you click on that, Photoshop will automatically select the distracting people in the photo, like this guy standing here on the left and people walking in the background, Photoshop is smart enough to determine who the main subject is and disregard it from the selection. Only the people in the background are selected. All we need to do now is simply press the Enter key on the keyboard and Photoshop will automatically remove those people as well. And if your project requires it, you can also use Generative Fill. All you need to do is enable the Selection Brush tool and brush over the areas you want to remove. I think the light post is very distracting and so are the cars on the street. Then click on Generator Fill. Once again, leave the prompt blank and click Generate. Then you can cycle through the variations to see which one works best for your image. In this case, I think I like the second one the most. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, click like and subscribe. Now let's go back into the Remove tool and look at the different modes. By default, Auto is selected, which means that Photoshop will select whether or not to use Generative AI in the removal process. Or you can decide to always use it or never use it. But why should you disable Generative AI? Well, two reasons. First, you can save Generative credits. The Remove tool is also great at removing small objects without requiring Generative AI. Second, it saves you time. With simple tasks, you don't have to upload the image to the cloud and wait for the results to process. Without Generative AI, the removal process is almost instantaneous. Set the mode to Generative AI off, and let's take a look at some examples where this option works best. But let me show you a fantastic Photoshop feature that will allow you to temporarily switch to a tool and jump right back to the one you're currently using. If you hold down the Z key, then click to zoom into the image, and release the Z key, Photoshop will jump right back into the Remove tool. This feature is known as Spring Loaded Keyboard Shortcuts. Also, enable the Pixel layer, and now let's remove the string from her sock. Hover over it and reduce the brush size by tapping on the left bracket key, then drag over it. You will have to press the Enter key to commit the changes. Notice how fast the remove process was, and we didn't have to use Generative AI. Let's now go into the options bar and check remove after each stroke and continue removing small distractions. You can do so by simply holding the space bar and clicking and dragging to pan and find distractions and blemishes like on her knee here, 
I'll keep scrolling up, and her skirt has a few black dots we can remove. And you can just continue panning and removing any other distraction. You can also remove wrinkles with this tool. The creases are fine, but I'm going to remove these wrinkles that don't look very good. Again, simply click and drag over them, and the remove tool has no problem removing them. As you can see, the remove tool does an incredible job even without generative AI. Look at the before and after. Everything looks great. Next, let's work on a more challenging task. We have a really great photo here. Unfortunately, the car and the street sign are very distracting, so let's remove them. We will have to get our hands dirty and do it manually. But as you saw earlier in the video, it's not that difficult. All we need to do is enable the selection brush, and I'm going to make a smaller brush by tapping on the left bracket key, and I'm going to quickly select over the sign. I want to keep some of those original pixels so that Photoshop has an idea of what the background should look like and I'm going to come back around like so. As soon as I connect the starting point with the end point, Photoshop will fill the rest in, and I can click on Generator Fill, leave the prompt blank, and choose Generate. And these are the results. You can cycle through them by clicking on the right arrow icon from the taskbar, and I think I like the third variation the best. If you click on the eye icon to disable the layer, you'll notice that we have a few problems. The side mirror changes shape, we lost the white balloon and the side of the car doesn't look very good, but we can definitely fix that. To do so, click on the layer mask icon, enable the brush tool, and make sure that black is your foreground color and you can paint on the layer mask to hide the generated pixels. I'll do that for all the areas I want to fix and I'll increase my brush size by tapping on the right bracket key. I'll paint that back in and now we're gonna have to paint with black to refine those edges. But before we do so, let me show you a trick. If you go into Window and choose Arrange, then go to New Window 4 in the name of all your open documents, in this case just one, remove Objects 3, click on it, and now it opens the same image on two windows. This is not a duplicate or a separate instance, it's the same image. Then go into Window, Arrange, and choose Two Up Vertical to put those two images side by side. Then I'm going to hold the Z key to enable the zoom tool. I'm going to click to zoom into this area and I'm going to just look at the side mirror here. When I release the Z key, I'll jump right back to the brush tool. That's the spring loaded keyboard shortcut feature we talked about earlier. Now I'm going to reduce my brush size and I'm going to tap on the X key on the keyboard to swap my foreground and background color so that white is my foreground color. Now I'm going to start painting back in. I'm painting in those generated pixels. And the reason that I'm doing this with two windows is so that I could see how the details are affecting the overall image. Also, here's a trick. If you click, hold shift and click again, Photoshop will draw a straight line between those two points. And I can use that technique to just follow along the edges like so. And it looks fantastic in the overall image. And then I can just continue painting the rest of the unwanted areas. And look at how the edges look in the overall image. Fantastic. And to save time, I will work on the balloons in the side of the car off screen. This is the result. All you need to do is close one of the two windows. You don't have to save just yet because again, they're the same image. You still have the second version of it open and just press Control S to save the second one. And you can see the before and the after. The image looks much, much better. And we got to keep the original details of the image. Again, I'm Jesus Ramirez. Thank you for watching.